Hey guys, Muggsy Makes here. Today I'm going to show you how to make embellishments and uh, it's really fun. I, I have a whole box of uh, awesome paper clay embellishments now. I'm going to the camera down and I'll show you how to do this. These are some of the embellishments I've made. This is just clay. It's paper clay, paper mache clay. And this I made from a salt mold. This was my mom's. I just pressed in a light layer of uh, paper mache clay, which this. You can buy this pre-made from craft stores. I'll leave that information below that way you can refer back to this video and see the recipe instead of having to watch it all the way through or you know skip around to find out where you know I had said something about the recipe. So paper mache clay is one cup of joint compound, six cups of paper mache paste, two cups of water and then you add either ripped up newspaper really finely or ripped up toilet paper a lot of people like to use I use a cell cellulose fill like for insulation in your house and I will link that below also I got that at a home improvement store I think it was a Lowe's it wasn't too badly priced and you get a huge big huge big uh, bundle of it and you don't use a whole lot of it so I've been able to use it in multiple paper mache projects and still many more to come so anyway so paper paper mache clay is very much like clay so. anyways you take that paper mache mixture mix it all together until it you know forms the clay paper mache paste is really easy to make the best recipe for me has been one cup of glue, which I use the Elmer's Glue All School Glue. One cup of liquid starch, which you can get that in the fabric and detergent aisle. I can also show you how to make your own really quick recipe here in a moment and also post that below this video so you can refer back to it. One cup of glue, one cup of liquid starch six cups of flour just white all-purpose cheap flour and seven cups of water you mix that all together until you get a nice paper mache paste which i will show you one moment i put my paper mache paste in an old gallon glue bottle so you can see the consistency through there it's perfect for paper mache once you have the clay and you can store it in a Ziploc bag or a Tupperware container. This makes this recipe makes quite a bit, so you'll want to use it over the next few weeks. It'll stay pretty good. Just when you take it out of the refrigerator, every time you use it, just you know, knead it up really well. There'll be some condensation collecting on the outside of the clay. What I did with this one, like I had said, it was a salt mold. I just pressed some clay down into and let it dry and the nice thing about paper clay is it shrinks just a little bit so it just pops out of molds pretty easily i did a lot of uh molds that i have of they're pretty cool i've gotten these recently from amazon i i, I believe i got these for under 10 bucks a piece really nice really flexible i've done quite a few things in here polymer clay uh, paper clay now with these we just did the same thing where press some clay down in here and then let it dry you know, but, and it has really nice detail and they bend a little bit and I'm sure if you want to work with them to get them to bend around something that you could get them wet a little bit again since this is just paper and bend it to what you need and then dry it again but yeah I went ahead and used these molds. I 
found this ice cube tray at the Dollar Tree and I put clay in here thinly as I could, evenly as I could and uh, did the spider web also. And the spider webs turned out pretty cool. They're kind of thick so I would definitely try to make them as thin as possible when I do it next time. And the spiders, they turned out really cool. And why, the reason why this spider is a different color, let me see if I can't find my other guy. I know I did two of them. Oh, here he is. So this is the other one. The reason why this guy looks the way he does is I was showing my husband, you know, when these came out, uh, when they dried and we were about heading out the door. So I had just set it right on this little shelf that's by the door, but I set it on one of those uh, wax melters and they had the dried wax, you know, the cooled off wax, you know, sitting on there. And at some point either I turned it back on, which I think it was probably me because I tend to do some like kind of forgetful things every once in a while, but I turned it back on and without even thinking or looking at it apparently. And uh, a while later I looked and I said, oh, this thing had like sunk down into the hot wax and pretty much wax itself so my husband pulled it off and we made sure there was no wax you know could shake it shook it off a little bit made sure there was no wax you know sitting you know pooled up in any of the areas and cooled it off so I'm kind of excited about this because it totally waterproof this and uh, I really like how it looks and it kind of smells pretty good too because it was a like a cinnamon wax for the melter so I've been using those little candle melts for a long time, the little waxes that have scents, because I, I really like those. And I've had a collection of ones that I've used so much that they don't really smell anymore, so they're just disc of wax. And I've been wanting to know what I possibly could do with them. And uh, yeah, I think I might, well, I might just uh, use it for uh, waterproofing these. Cause it just soaked in everywhere it's perfect so pretty happy accidents i love those when i'm creating it's so cool so anyways it looks really cool i can't wait to put it on something uh it'd be cool just to embellish it on a prop or some kind of project or just your journal page or the cover of a journal you know make it look like a, you know, a spell book very cool all right also i have these molds that are faces they're really weird from this angle. They're funny looking. Um, anyways, so I did a whole bunch of faces. And I had done the faces before in polymer clay and they turned out really well, but they were heavy. And these are super light. And I'm surprised the amount of detail that came out of all of these. I'll show you everything I've done here. The moon's cool. I thought of Cali Black when I did the moon and the stars. Another one of the molds I have is these keyholes, and they are adorable. They are super adorable. So all those, and then for like cake decorating and whatnot, you know, you can put fondant in here, and obviously you can put it around cake. But look at all these cool. these cool textures and you can break these if you need to if you're putting them in something a collage or a uh, altered piece of like assemblage or whatnot so I paint them really easily so I was like really psyched that you know this was working and the detail was so nice and then I was thinking well, what if I use one of my stamps you know just a just a little stamp that I have this is what one with a kind of distressed harlequin and I thought, what if I, you know, press some clay into this and let it dry? You know, I don't think it would ruin my stamp. And uh, it didn't. So it dried overnight and it was kind of, you know, a little tough to peel, get going. But peeled it off and it, all right. It's summer. Look at this. This is just paper. So it's this awesome 
mixed media piece that's going to be amazing to put in journals, anything. It will be amazing to put in anything. You'll be able to paint it. So I started getting a little crazy with the stamps because it was getting later at night and I did one of my skulls. You know, just press the clay down in there. It's a little hard to tell. Let's see if I, there you go. You know, and this one bent a little bit when it dried, but you, like I said, you can, you can push them flat on a piece of paper, so if you glue these down, they're staying. So, I did a spider web stamp. Sorry, the camera. Just did my, my clay super thin on it. And then I have this awesome, great big skeleton dance stamp that I went ahead and pressed clay into and ended up getting this amazing piece. It's not super clear, but I mean you can see, well let me put it the right way for you guys, sorry. You can see, you know, the skeleton and his umbrella and whatnot, so. And it's just so cool, it's so rough around the edges. It's just gonna be perfect to put it on, you know, a journal page or a piece of something. It's just, it's, yeah, awesome. So I went from stamps then, because I have these texture plates that I use in my die cut machine. You can put things in here and press them. You can do paper or aluminum foil or uh, embossing. Get the and I thought, well, that would be incredible to you. Put some clay, you know, in these and I'll see if they dry in there. So you have to put the clay and keep them open. But look at that, look at that. both sides. But isn't that amazing? That's going to be an, oh, look how thin it is. And it is flexible. Like I said, I could break this, but I can also lay it flat and put it totally flat on the page. So you can break off little pieces and use it as you need. So I did, I did the brick wall. And then I did, these are like gears. So I did some gears. Again, this one's bent, but look, you can really push them flat. So I just did a stencil and put the put some craft foam down so we had a little bit of squish, put the stencil down and then just pressed in a really, really thin layer of the paper mache clay and let that dry like that and look at that. Look how thin that is. Again, you can break it up, glue it on. It's just awesome. I'm I'm super psyched to share this with everybody and get everybody making something that you can you can make on the cheap and make it yourself I'm also trying other things because I just have those molds I took a little light bulb and I put some clay around there last night and let it dry so I'm now gonna try to see if I can't run something in here and get an impression of like a half of a light bulb because wouldn't those be cool to put on canvases? I've seen where you can buy, I think Tim Holtz, of course, amazing stuff. I think he has some, so I think that's where I got inspired by that. But I thought, I gotta figure this out. I think I might, what I might either do is do a thin layer of latex or a thin layer of like some kind of hard silicone and then see if I can't break this off and then have that piece. So we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens. So, super fun. I've got some other molds that I found at thrift stores. This one's like birthday cakes and cupcakes and stuff. I thought that would be kind of cute. And then some old soap and candy. It's got some leaves, some flowers, 
some little, like, looks like candies or whatnot. With paper clay, you're not going to get, like, 100% detail. But you are going to get nice enough that you could use these as embellishments. You can paint them as you want. They'll absorb the colors very nicely. You might want to gesso them. Um, and then you can probably do anything to them. But I'm excited for everybody to make their own. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. I'm gonna use this mold because I'm loving the sunshine. I'm gonna take a little ball of my paper clay. Make sure you knead it well and get it, you know, nice and soft. The more kneaded and soft that it is, the better it's going to uh, show the detail. All right, that looks about right. You don't want to do too much. It's kind of an eyeball sort of thing, but you'll get it after the first time or two. And then, okay, how about I do this so you can see it? And then I'm just pushing the clay in. Let me see if I can't get any closer to you guys. There we go. I'm just pushing the clay in real thin. overnight and it just turn it over and it just falls out and I'll show you really quick with the stamps also take a little bit of clay make sure you work it out this is the skull Start through the middle and I just work out. Now I was trying to be careful with only getting it to the edges last time and what I found out it's really hard to get off of here if it's just right nice and clean to the edges. So make sure you use enough that you can have a lip on it on the sides because that, come, that comes in super handy. And you can always sand off the sides or just break off the sides or use a nail file to do, you know, delicate work. So nice and thin. That way you have a nice flat back here. thin layer overlapped just so you can get your finger under here and kind of tug it off you don't want to make sure that you clean your stamps right away after using these because they're gonna sit like this for a night so these are just kind of cheap stamps that I've gotten a lot of them are like goodwill finds but I still love them I don't want to ruin them so I've done this a few times now and nothing has happened. So just clean your stamp well afterward to make sure it's dry. And they come out really nice. Here's the ice cube tray. This is the one that is at the Dollar Tree. Press that down. Then we're just going to do the same thing with the spider. It's got a little longer leg, so you want to make sure your clay gets down in those spots.
try to get it as even as possible. There you go. So these are just spiders and spider webs. I really like how the spider, I know I just showed it to you, but look at that. Isn't that cool? It's like a medallion. It's really cool. I need to find something now that has like a scarab like this because uh, our next Halloween haunt for 2018 is going to be like an Egyptian sort of theme and I, I want to do a lot of scarab things and I don't know if I'm going to have to make my own and then mold it um, or hopefully I can just find a really cool scarab that I can mold. But there you have it guys. Texture plates are the same. Work your clay. Smush it down on your texture plate. I like doing the edges on this really thin now because these are a little bit easier to get off than the stamp because you can just flex them. The really thin edges look cool underneath paint and other things that you're doing to a page. And the thinner this is, the better you can you know, incorporate it into an actual journal page and not affect the whole journal because it's too lumpy. So that's it. Press it down. And then these folders you want to keep open because otherwise they're not going to dry. So. All right, guys, we're going to see how these turn out in a ne the next few projects. I can make some videos if you guys would like on how to make paper mache clay and how to make paper mache paste and and uh, how to make your own cornstarch for the paper mache paste. If you guys are interested in that, uh, leave a comment and say, hey, I'd like to hear about that. I would uh, gladly post a video. I am loving doing videos. I, I've been wanting to do it for a long time, for, you know, a few years now, and uh, it's just taken me time to get to the right place and I just yeah ever since I started I'm just so excited I have so many ideas and I'm so hyped for the community that has welcomed me and I'm just excited to do some art and learn some new things and share new things with you guys and just have some art friends because you know art friends are great Leave a comment, say hello, say hi, introduce yourself, uh, link your channel, tell me about your channel. I would love to come and visit and see what crafty things that you guys are doing. Um, say hello, and subscribe, like my video if you like this, and uh, do this, and then tell me how it went. Tell me what are these cool things that you've made, because it would be really cool to put together some packs of just random stuff you know that we can stamp at our own places and just kind of share them around because it's paper it's really cheap so all right you guys the wax idea loving that and it just looks so cool already and smells like cinnamon so, i really think that these things would be awesome in like assemblage projects that like Callie Black just did. Hi Callie. If you have not checked out Callie Black's channel, which I am linking below, you must take the time just to wander over there really quick. And uh, I have a feeling that you'll probably find yourself there for a while, feet kicked up and a cup of tea or coffee because it's a place that just feels good to be there. Kelly is a wonderful artist and she's an even more wonderful person. So it's definitely a add to your life. So check her out. She's super crafty and I get a lot of my inspiration from her and uh, yeah. All right guys. So super excited. There's all these different ways you can make textures on paper clay. You could even take bubble wrap and press it together and let it dry. That would look cool. Oh my god, so many ideas. Alright guys, well I will see you on the next video and have a fantastic week. It's getting cold here again. Had to cover up the trees. I've got a couple uh, trees out on my deck that are, they're meant to be here in North Idaho, but 
it gets awfully cold and one of them is a hardy orange tree that I've actually been getting to blossom multiple times a year for the last few years so and it smells amazing I don't know if there's a better smell than orange blossoms but yeah just awesome so I've been covering them up at night so the frost doesn't uh, hurt them too much but it's time for me to either figure out if I'm gonna bring them in again this year they got much bigger or if I'm gonna work something out so I can you know pack them with straw and keep them warm for the winter so anyways that's a whole different thing so I I'm gonna let you guys go thank you for watching and uh, yeah have a good week <laughs>